What up, guys? We're Jack and Jack. And we're hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. What's up, guys? Rob here, Front Row Live Entertainment. It's been a very long time, but I'm reunited with Jack and Jack. The last time we spoke, I think it was like during the Kalen and Miles tours. Like, wow, it was a minute. That's like 2014, 2015. <laughs> yeah, so it's been a while. Wow, Good seeing you, man. Thanks for having us on. We Likewise, it. it's so crazy seeing you know you guys have grown. Obviously, like from you guys were super young back then, and like now you know adults taller than anyone else yeah, it's, wild. it's like insane like it blows my mind like as you guys walked in how have you guys been and how's like this like evolution of, of life been for you guys it's a good question man um you know being since it's been since that era since we've spoken to you is what that's probably seven yeah. six seven years. at least seven years a lot has changed you know we've uh we've really been kind of through the ringer in the industry and made it out the other side yeah. still with our relationship intact as best friends and Really feeling like this new chapter is going to be the most honest representation of, of Jack and Jack, who we are as people, uh, finally making the exact music that we want to make and share with the people. And, you know, nobody's pulling the strings above us now, which is kind of nice. We were with the major label for a little while, and, you know, great things came out of that, and, yeah. you know, there was some great exposure, but it also felt like it, it necessarily wasn't a true representation of who we were, everything that we were putting out, uh, some of the songs that we were being told to promote it's like oh we didn't even have a hand in the create the creative process yeah. and so it felt a little bit uh kind of like a shell of what making music once was for us yeah. and so now it feels like i don't know if you want to elaborate on this at all g but it feels like we're in a great spot now so 100 oh, percent. i mean i couldn't agree more with you i mean that's what i would say is you know we had this vision even as 15 16 17 year olds coming mm -hmm. out of high school and like starting our music career and coming to la and the whole theme and the idea behind that idea was to do it independently, do it the way that, you know, yeah. we started doing it because that's clearly what worked and that's what connected with and resonated with all of our supporters. So, um, everything gets a little tricky when a lot of hands get in the pot and you know, your vision starts almost becoming someone else's vision. And yeah, we're just grateful to have made it out the other side of yeah. all those, those industry trials and tribulations. And we feel like we're in the best spot, both our relationship wise, just as friends and, you know, just as adults who have grown now and matured and just, figured out who we are more, both in the studio and outside of the studio, just as yeah. humans. So I don't know. It feels like a kind of full circle moment uh, with this project coming out and like the start of something really great, I think. so. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I hear that with this project. I mean, there's an evolution in sound and, and, and vocals and just the writing process as well. Obviously, it feels more personal now. Um, talk to me a little bit about like getting together and starting to work on on Home, which is basically going to be the sophomore album. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, how did how did that chemistry kind of change in the studio between the two of you now that you guys kind of had your own lives to live? Yeah, no, good question. I, I would say, you know, there was a period of time, probably maybe a total of 18 to 24 months where we actually made zero music together from yeah. 2020 to 2022. No, probably like 2021, we yeah, like started making music again together. You your solo project. And yeah. And I was working on my solo project. And so it's sort of like, yeah, it was this period where it felt like we were not really even allowed to be yeah, making I mean, music together. Contractually, we, we knew we couldn't put anything out. You know, I was on That's a solo contract. Like, so was he. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was still with the major label that we were signed to as a duo. It was a weird situation. So those were like the real months that was that was interesting creatively between us. I mean, we were still hanging out all the time and doing what we do, you know, outside of making music anyways. But um, I will say that, like, we, we still... Right after that, we moved in together late in 2020, and we had a studio in our house. So we really didn't refrain from like, if we happened to make music together, we, yeah. we made music together. We damn near had a whole like project for him that like I produced that we just made at the house, you yeah. know. And we're like, we don't know if these will ever see the light of day. We don't mm -hmm. know how this will work with the current situation we're in. But I think regardless of everything, that period, like us diving into our solo endeavors musically, I think it really made us so much better. Uh, coming back together like it's crazy thinking back to this project and just like the growth that we kind of had as artists I don't think there was like any record that we started that we didn't finish maybe on this a, album maybe a couple there's like two or three but I still think we're gonna circle back to them you know it's, it's not, crazy yeah like mm. like I feel like what you're saying is like we like went 12 for 12 basically yeah. in the studio and that is last so project, rare yeah last project we we probably cut 20 different demos and we, and we had like we used like six or seven of them and the other ones we worked on and maybe used half of those out of like another 15 that we worked on and it, it just felt like when we were getting in there and we like had a vibe that we liked on this project 
we knew what we wanted to do with it. It just came out. And we executed it so much um, efficient, so much more efficiently than we did in the past where we were spending thousands of dollars on studio time of recoupable money from the label because they yeah. were willing to throw anything at the wall. I, stuck. I think a lot of that had to do with... Um, you know, when we were with Island Records, they had us set up with a bunch of writers uh, in every single session. And so a lot of the times it felt like we would kind of just, we were kind of new to the industry. So we would yeah. kind of just bow down and be like, oh, we'll go with that because you're Yeah, a these guys, you know, are Grammy nominated or whatever. And, and, and that's so sick. And I have so much respect for all the writers that we've ever worked with. Like truly, some I've learned so much in those sessions. Absolutely. Yeah. Great respect. But Sometimes we would bite our tongue though, inevitably, just being kind of rookies into the game, even yeah. though we really, yeah. And then some of the songs would just end up kind of just existing, halfway made, getting lost in translation because we would listen to them back and we weren't truly confident in them and they weren't really us. And it felt like we avoided all of that on this project and it just came effortlessly. <laughs> yes. so. yeah. yeah, that's the long answer. Like, yeah. that, you know, it's just like, it's us. That's all it is. Yeah. It's us. So it, it feels yeah, good. It's, it's your own words. It's your own experiences, your own, everything that you want to put. It's in here. We get to listen to your version of life. Basically, yes. that's what it is. Yes. Um, how has that collaboration been like though? Like, because you both got to step away and do your own things coming into this as Jack and Jack once again like did you feel that like your lane in, in your vocals or your directions and in, in the way that you kind of like write lyrics or whatnot kind of changed now that you kind of had that experience yeah I mean honestly I think inherently like the way we make music kind of it was like riding a bike when we got back together in the yeah. studio you know um at least just the process but I will say for sure I mean it felt like it felt like we weren't as nitpicky and a bit more confident in the things mm -hmm. we were saying and how we were saying them and the melodies we were choosing, you know, um, versus when we first started making music. And, you know, it's obviously something that's always been inside of us, but I think after eight plus years of working diligently in the studio, you know, you just, you learn some things that, yeah. that inherently you're going to be better at uh, over time. And we also didn't have that thought in the back of our head, like, oh, is this executive going to like it? You know, are, is this board of people who decide what goes out? Like, yeah. is, Will radio pick it up? Yeah, is yeah. this going to pass the test? Are we going to... But truly, like, our biggest songs from, you know, 2014, 2015, 2016... The ones that truly connected and like got the most streams were because our fans felt like they were genuine from us. Yeah. And those just always performed the best. And so... There's I, no chess game like that we thought there was at one point. There's no... Like, the industry makes it feel like, oh, there's everything has to align perfectly and it has to be the perfect song with the perfect melody and then the promotion has to be perfect. It's like... But and we're learning with TikTok now. That's It's going back to the way it was 10 years ago, which is it's, awesome. It's all just like chuck it out there on a wall and see what it's sticks, true. you know? And it's it, you let the people decide, you know? The, it's the most reactive and immediate, I guess, gratification or a, a consumer like data-driven market that we've ever lived in because you can put something out and overnight you could wake up and it could have a little steam and, you know, even based on... Even if it goes very semi-viral or it gets like... 7,000 likes and normally you get like 100, 200 likes. It's like, whoa, That's it's not, it's not mind blowing a... numbers, but there's a sign that like this one was reactive and, and maybe this song should be the one that I usher along a little bit quicker and get out to the people. And yeah, I love this, the instant kind of, um, consumer driven market we live in where, yeah. you know, you know what the people want. You can, you can test, test the, the waters. waters. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, what is, what has it been like collaborating in the studio with, with Brandon Edwin, um, oh, yeah. and Zion as well like they're helping you guys with so with some of the writing but yeah. also like doing some of the produ the production yeah. so how has that chemistry been like I feel like they've also gone through that same kind of experiences yeah. that you guys have gone through as well yeah I love the pretty much boys they uh ever since the 2017 tour they came on with us like we've been really close we've been like that and so um that's actually something that came out of the label that was really good they were like hey this new boy band is popping you're gonna put them on your we're like ah, oh, okay we checked them out <laughs> we thought it. they were dope but we were like I don't know boy band like yeah. I, you know because we were already like a duo at the time in 2017 but then we hit it off immediately in 2017 on the road with them fall 2017 tour and then uh brandon they're actually, like some of our best boys yeah still to this day and brandon actually produced uh the title track on this project the most recent single home and edwin did vocals it's amazing, on that yeah. zion they did gang vocals they're doing on like the background home. vocals on like some of the the gospel stuff yeah. and uh yeah yeah we all just were vibing out over at their crib one day and then we had a follow-up session with brandon um and we brought in two of our buddies from Omaha, they actually went to our high school, West Side, yeah. back in Omaha, and Their they were a few grades players. above us. They were in a sister's grade, I think, two years above us. And one plays trumpet and one plays trombone, and they just laced the best horns. The first time we ever tracked live horns on a song, and that one just came together really beautifully. Uh, you know, we had the idea to have the tempo slow down in the hook and then pick back up, which we've never done in a song. And I loved getting all of our brains together in that session. And uh, yeah, big shout out to the Pretty Much Boys. Shout out to Brandon for for producing that jaunt and the Potash Twins who laced oh, the yeah. horns. Really love that record though. It feels 
it feels right. You know, yeah. it feels soulful. There's yeah, it's awesome that stuff. that's our title track because I, yeah. I think that's like probably the most soulful record, the most real instru- fresh. R- instrumentation driven song on there. So uh, it's it's dope that they were a part of that one. How has having like instrumentation like that with with the horns kind of impacted either your writing process or even just like the types of vocal ranges that you want to consider now on this on this new album? Mm, yeah, that's a good question too. Yeah, this one like I don't know. I feel like we've started more songs on this one more bare bones. Like there's a couple that like I sort of just flushed out at the piano yeah. that were kind of written all the way on piano and then yeah. and and then the production kind of would follow suit. You know, so I like some of the records on here were kind of conceived as bare bones and then I think everything else you add just makes it like you can strip it down and it can be a beautiful song and if it's a beautiful song fully stripped down then it's like you know whatever you add to it is just going to add a little bit of you know cherry on top fire to the flame whatever you want to call it fuel to the fire um but yeah so I think we really want this project to translate live and we have a band live on this upcoming tour and so um yeah, I think it's definitely the most musical uh, of everything. And the creative process has been a bit different because sometimes it would be, and we still did this on a few songs where we would go in and we, we just had a beat that we already liked from one of our producer homies and we just tracked vocals to it. But uh, a good portion of these songs were just like very raw the way they started that yeah. too, you know? Yeah, like an OG way of making music, how I imagine like our favorite, you know, classic bands, like guys like the Beatles, like sitting at a piano and everyone's kind of like chiming in on. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, it feels real and raw when you do it that way. I don't mind making music to like a beat either, but sometimes you catch lightning in a bottle when you're just sitting in a room and like, you know, uh, someone's just tickling the keys and he sings a melody and it just clicks, you know? Um, and sometimes, yeah, there's two songs on there. Uh, September's gone and scared of love that just feel like beautiful piano ballads feel timeless. And I really like having that sort of, in the mix with uh, some of the more pop driven stuff. There's a few songs that are more synthetic driven, I'd say, but yeah. it's good to have that kind of rustic and raw feel on some of those songs. I like that we have that mix, you know? It's good. It's a good balance across yeah. the board, I think. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Scared of Love, just because you did mention that it's also a piano ballad. So mm-hmm. I'm assuming that's probably one of the most vulnerable songs on this, on this album. Yeah. How has it been like opening up this time knowing that this is like your words, your experiences being heard and, you know, whether there's a big instrumentation or not? Yeah, wow. Um, well, that one Johnson wrote, like, literally at his key. Like, I'm, I I just referenced <laughs> the Beatles, and I know, like, we're not there, right? But, like, it's cool because you'll hear a song, and Paul's singing it, right? But it's like, oh, you figure out five or ten years later, you're like, wait, John wrote that entire song? Or George wrote that song? Like, what the? I've never even heard this guy speak. But, like, I know we're way different. We're not, you know, on that caliber just yet. <laughs> but it's funny, though, because I wrote that song with G in his relationship in mind because, like, yeah. he's got a very happy family unit. You know, he's got a newborn baby girl and, and a girlfriend that he loves very much and everything's just going great in that aspect. And I'm like... I'm like, wow, what if I like put myself in his shoes about like meeting someone and now I'm not scared of love. Like this is the one, you know, yeah. and, and I haven't found the one yet, but it's nice because it like I, can, I like writing from other perspectives and I knew it would, be, it would be a song that he would resonate with once yes. I sang him the lyrics or showed him like the idea. The second I heard, it, I was like, bro, this is and it's so cool to hear your perspective on my relationship too, or, or just any relationship that is in the stage that I'm in as well. Like, yeah. it's nice. And yeah. and it is vulnerable, even though he wrote the lyrics that I'm singing. Like I, I believe those lyrics. Like I, they really do. Like he said, resonate with me. And so I, I'm like, you know, I, I don't know. It does feel vulnerable, even though I'm not the one who wrote it. Like it's still, I'm singing these lyrics. <laughs> How have you guys seen like yourselves individually, like evolve vocally on this project? Mm, well, I think just confidence is is first and foremost what shines through on this project. You mm-hmm. know, I, I think even with there was times where I didn't fully feel confident in my tone I'd say even even in 2019 when we made our last project I think I was getting there I was like nearly there but uh this project I don't know it feels like we've mentioned earlier a lot more effortless when it comes to just like being in the studio and how to deliver a take and how to deliver a verse um and knowing how the other one can deliver like because most of the time we're vocal producing each other yeah every now and then you know we got Mike and Chris and we have Caesar and guys who do help us when we're in the studio with them but a lot of the records we recorded just us two yeah and so uh it's nice to be able to just actually track Johnson and be like like, uh, I don't know how to Ooh, even... I liked how you hit it there. Like, yeah. do that again. Or, like, he can be on the talk back and, and vice versa, you know. G does something in a very, like, specific way on one of the takes. And I'm like, oh, do it just like that. Like, keep your mouth wide or whatever. Right. And so it's it's nice because our rapport in the studio is just stronger than ever. And I think, I mean, he his voice, like, versus five years ago. Like, his voice was great five years ago. But I think it just, Appreciate like, really it. shines through now. I mean, we have the first 
song we've ever done where it's back and forth every bar on the hook, which is exciting. Yeah, we're, that, we're, just, we're going back and forth, and our tones are just kind of meshing effortlessly. And that's like. something we talked about doing for like probably honestly a decade now, and it's cool that we didn't even set out to do that on this album, but yeah. it happened with this one beat and like this crazy title, and it just worked. And like that's not even a song that really has any like. <laughs> uh, like there's truth to it, obviously, but like we're just having fun, yeah. yeah. We, and we're just writing about a, a potential scenario, but like it, you know, it's not like a real thing that we're going through at the time. So it's cool because we have all different kinds of mixes of that's of fun, meanings. That's in the fun section of the album, you know, yes. the, the one that doesn't tug on the heartstrings too much. Exactly. So. <laughs> yeah. So this album drops March first. Uh, Home yeah. is is the title of the album, mm -hmm. and then you guys are heading out on tour. Uh, March 13th, I believe. Yes. Um, yeah. First tour in quite some time. So Five talk to me years. about this uh, No Place Like Home tour. We're so excited, man. Uh, kicks off March 13th in Nashville. We're doing 23 cities in the U.S. Yep. And yeah, I mean, we're just excited. It's going to feel like a reunion tour almost to those people that we've, those those supporters that we sort of neglected for five years. You know, a lot of it against against our own will or say, but um, we owe this tour to them. You know, we owe them uh, a great healthy combination of old music and new music. Make sure we get all the classics in there and just make it a night that feels like a full circle moment for anybody who's been part of the Jack and Jack family over the years. But also that feels like it's ushering in the new era, you know? And so oh, for sure. we're excited. We were looking at our catalog and we have so many songs. We're like, how do we thin out this project? And so, or this, uh, this track list for the, for the set. And yeah, so cause we could easily do like, you know, 150 minutes, you know, or, or even 90 minutes, but yeah. like, the the places we're doing like it's so hard to fit all this into like 80 or 85 minutes which yeah. is kind of like what we're shooting for but uh one day you know i hope that we're in a much bigger uh room or arena or whatever Dude, it is yeah because yeah. because we have the we have the music and we know like the oogs really really yeah. want to like yeah hear those songs the deep cuts and it's we just wild it used to play them all we used to have to like stretch and like find because we would only have like eight songs out or, or like six songs out yeah. our first tour and we'd have to like find ways or like do covers or find ways to extend our set or like try to talk for like a whole five minutes at a time like when we would like stop <laughs> between now it's songs. like the complete opposite problem now it's yeah. like dude how do we how do we we have to play this song, but you're telling me like it's we like almost to, like this or this, you know? Like yeah, so we put together this medley of a lot of like the super OG songs, yeah. which I really hope like the day one supporters appreciate, you know, because we'll try to give them a little dose of a lot in a short amount of time. But uh, there are some random throwbacks in there that maybe some people won't expect. Uh, but for the most part, we're playing the new album, and a good friend is nice, which is five years old, and yeah. it's and just old, yeah, the EPs. I mean, you yeah. don't know what you don't know what you're gonna get. You know, it's kind of gonna be yeah, a mystery box. It's so true. We're just excited, man, and it's gonna be really special for everybody who's been there with us from the jump, and just for us. You know, it's we've mi we've missed the stage so much. It's where we feel like home, honestly. That's like another meaning behind the project is this tour. No place like home is there's no place like a Jack and Jack show yeah. where, you know, you can just let all your insecurities go to the wayside and just be yourself for 90 minutes. And it's just going to be a great night for everybody in every, in every market. And we just can't wait. Yeah. Awesome guys. Well, thank you so much for reuniting with me. I'm excited to, to catch you guys live on, you guys are going to be playing the echo, uh, yeah, echo closing Flex out and, 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 and it's the, yeah, it's like one of the last right before San Diego where we close it. The 16th, yeah. I think May 16th. it'll feel like the last one. Cause we'll like have our bags at home by that point. We'll just drive <laughs> down to San Diego and do one more show, go. which we're looking Pull up in sweats to. and you're good. Exactly. <laughs> it's going to be electric and we appreciate you having us on Rob. Thanks again, Absolutely. man. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you guys. You guys be sure to check out Jack and Jack new album home drops March 1st. Thanks for watching on front row live. And if you enjoyed this interview, there's tons more on the channel, so please be sure to subscribe.